Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Learn to Teach. So here I am today to discuss with you all a topic of Class Seven Science, Chapter Number Three, Fiber to Fabric. Now most of you all must be familiar with this topic since it was there in Class Six as well. So before beginning with the main topic of what we have to discuss in Class Seven. Let us have a very quick revision of what all things have you all learned in class six. Now the word fibers means what? So fibers are nothing but the thin strands of thread, just like thin hair-like structure, which are the raw materials used to make different fabrics. And how exactly these fabrics or else clothes are being obtained from fibers? It is because initially. these fibers they are twisted they are spun together to make thick yarns and then these yarns they are interlooped they are bounded together using different methods to make different fabrics so you must be thinking why there are so many variations in the fabrics why do we have so many varieties like cotton wool silk rayon nylon denim etc it is because we have variations in the fibers yes so fibers actually are being obtained from the two sources the first is the natural source and the second is the synthetic source so these fibers are actually of two types natural fibers and synthetic fibers so natural fibers you can understand by the name itself natural means obtained from nature these fibers are obtained from plants and animals and synthetic fibers are what synthetic fibers are the fibers obtained using certain chemical substances we have certain examples of the natural fibers like cotton jute flax silk wool angora wool etc and the examples of synthetic fibers are nylon polyester acrylic rayon and so on so in class 6 you all must have learned about some plant fibers like cotton and jute how are they being obtained and processed into fabrics now in class 7 we are mainly going to focus on the animal fibers that is wool and silk how are they being obtained and processed into fabrics Let's begin discussing about the animal fibers, wool and silk. So, starting with wool, what do you think? So, wool is obtained from which animals? Is it cat or else dog? Obviously not. Wool comes from sheep. It comes from goat, yak, camel, llama, and few other animals. Now, if you carefully look onto their body. you will find a thick coat or else a thick layer of hair on to their body and why do you think so that these animals have a thick coat of hair it is because mostly these animals are found in the hilly areas in the mountainous region that is in the region where the environment is cold so just to get protection from the cold environment these animals have adapted in such a manner that their body develops a thick coat of hair and how is this thick coat of hair is helping these animals to stay warm it is all because this thick coat of hair it is trapping a lot of air and since air it is a poor conductor of heat it prevents the flow of heat from the animal's body to the cold surroundings thus keeping the animals warm now talking about sheep sheep has two types of hair on its body the first one is the coarse beard hair that is the outer rough hair and the second one is the fine soft under hair which is close to their skin and these fine hair only provides the fibers for making the wool and that's the reason there are some breeds some kinds of sheep which possess only the fine under hair and how is this possible it is possible because the sheep are specially chosen they are specially selected to give birth to their lamb 
which have only and only the soft under hair and this process it is known as selective breeding so what is selective breeding selective breeding is the process of selecting the parents for obtaining special characters in their offsprings though the sheep wool is most commonly available in the market of our country but the wool obtained from other animals are not less famous like for example the yak wool yak wool is common in tibet and ladakh whereas the angora wool is obtained from angora goats that are found in the hilly regions of jammu and kashmir also this angora wool it is very fluffy and luxurious fabric that comes from angora rabbits and that's the reason angora is considered a luxury fiber also we have the wool which is obtained from the goat hair the under hair of kashmiri goat it is very soft and it is woven into fine shawls which are named as pashmina shawls and you know what is the speciality of this pashmina shawl the wool which is used over here it is very delicate it is fine and exceptionally warm and that's the reason this wool it acts as an insulator keeping the goat warm active and protecting from the freezing cold environment also the animals like camel llama and alpaca provide us wool okay now let us learn about the process of obtaining wool from fibers so talking about the rearing and breeding of sheep most of you all must have seen the shepherds taking their herds of sheep for grazing now sheep as you all know it is a herbivorous animal so mostly it feeds on grasses and leaves but just feeding on the grasses and leaves it is not enough so the rearers they provide the sheep with the plant products as well that is the sheep gets a mixture of pulses corn jowar oil cakes and minerals why is this so just to get a very good quality and texture of the wool fibers so in the winter season the sheep are kept indoors and fed on leaves grain and dry fodder once the reared sheep they have developed a thick growth of hair then mostly during the summer season their hair is shaved off for getting the wool now why mostly in the summer season because this thick growth of hair is protecting the sheep from cold environment in the winter season but the same thick growth of hair is troubling them in the summer season because these sheep feel very hot and that's the reason their hair is mostly shaved off during the summer season now talking about the steps involved in processing fibers into wool i have discussed the first step with you all that is shaving off the hair of the sheep so this process it is known as shearing so the first step is shearing so what is shearing it is the process where the fleece of the sheep that is the hair of the sheep along with just a thin layer of skin it is removed off from their body now you might have this question in your mind whether this process of shearing it is painful to the sheep or not so the answer to this question is no just as we get our hair cut just as we shave off our hair or else when men uh, shave off their beard it is neither painful nor it hurts our skin in the similar fashion shearing process it does not hurt the sheep since the uppermost layer of their skin it is dead also the hair of the sheep it grows back again just as our hair does and as i've discussed with you all that uh, the hair is usually removed during the hot weather that is during the summer season so this enables the sheep to survive without their thick protective coat of hair now the removed of skin that is the sheared skin along with the hair needs to be cleaned thoroughly so the second step involved in processing fibers it is known as scouring so what is scouring nothing but the cleaning process where the sheared skin along with the hair it is thoroughly washed in big big tanks using some detergent some hot water 
to remove all sort of impurities and contaminants like the vegetable impurities, dust and dirt particles, grease, oil and many more. After a proper cleaning and drying process, now the woolen fibers need to be separated off. That is, they need to be sorted properly in groups. So the third step involved in processing fibers, it is known as sorting. So what is sorting? Here the hairy skin of the sheep, it is sent to various factories where the hair of different textures, quality, color, thickness, length are separated. Now after the separation of hairy fibers, the next step involved in processing, it is known as cleaning of birds. Now, what are these birds exactly? So, many of us might have noticed a soft cotton tangled ball-like structure which sometimes appear on our sweaters. Those are nothing but the birds which are the small soft fluffy fibers which needs to be removed off to obtain a superior and good quality of wool. After the birds are picked out from the hair, these fibers become ready to proceed further. Now you all know this thing very well that the natural fleece of sheep, that is the natural hair of sheep and goats are either black, brown or else white. But the kind of sweaters we wear, the kind of shawls and bufflers we use, those are quite colorful. So how our sweaters are getting those colors from? So the next step involved in processing fibers, it is known as dyeing. So the fibers are dyed into various colors to give them the best of their look. After the fibers are given different colors, they become ready to move on to the last step of the process. And that is nothing but step number six, rolling into yarns. So the woolen fibers, they are dried, straightened, combed, twisted and rolled into yarns, making sure that no knot occur in between. So the longer fibers, they are used to knit sweaters, whereas the shorter fibers are spun and woven into different woolen cloths. So these were the six major steps, shearing, scouring, sorting, cleaning of wools, dyeing and rolling, which are involved in the production of wool, which is used for knitting sweaters and for weaving the shawls. So this was all about the topic, production of wool as an animal fiber, obtained from the fleece of certain animals. Now, before I end this video, I want to discuss with you all a very interesting question, which is given in your class seven science NCERT textbook, which is as follows. Why a cotton garment cannot keep us as warm in winter as a woolen sweater does? Any guesses over here? Now, as I've discussed with you all in the starting of this video, that both air and wool are the poor conductors of heat. And so the air which gets trapped in between the woolen fibers prevents the flow of heat from our body to the cold surroundings. That is, they stop the flow of heat from our body to the cold environment. And that's the reason we feel warm. But that's not the case with the cotton garments. Yes, the cotton cloths, they are thin and soft. And these cotton fabrics, they do not have the space to trap in the air. And that's the reason they do not prevent the heat coming out of our body. That's it for today. Hope that the concept was easy and interesting for you to understand. Do comment and share your views about the video. And please, please do subscribe to my channel if not yet done. Till then, keep learning, keep teaching and keep enjoying.